When Conor McGregor for the third time announces his retirement from the fight game, what is that all about? Is that forever? A lot of people are saying there's no chance that this is anything other than a, a leverage play by Conor McGregor. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think we'll see Conor McGregor back again. You know, he's done this twice before. I think people are getting a little, they're getting a little distracted by the R word. And, you know, as I told his team, I wish he didn't use the R word because I think what he's saying is legitimate. What he is truly saying is, I'm frustrated. I want to fight. I wanted to fight three times in 2020. I haven't fought three times in four years. I had a horrible 2019. I just want to get back to work. I'm doing all the right things. I'm staying healthy. I'm staying out of trouble. And you guys can't get me a fight. How is it possible that the biggest draw in the history of this sport can't get a fight? And so he's finally saying enough is enough. I'm frustrated and I'm taking my ball essentially and going home. In the end, I think they'll figure it out. In the end, I think he'll come, about, come back. But I think it speaks to a larger issue right now in the sport of MMA, which is the top 1% of this sport all of a sudden are revolting. Like you've got four oh, yeah. legitimate stars in this sport right now openly feuding with the UFC, and that's something that we've never seen before. I was wondering, do you think there's a chance that they're all gonna create their own thing? And now, I don't know how easy or how hard that would be, especially with licensing and things of that nature, but Floyd Mayweather has shown that, hey, if you take your ball and you go to your own court, you can make a lot of money. I always thought John Jones was maybe the guy that had enough clout at the time at one time where if he was to put on a fight himself a lot of people would watch conor mcgregor definitely has enough clout to do it now you got jorge masvidal also saying like hey i, I this is i want out let me at least get this thing is there any chance dana white is potentially going to run into some competition by these fighters putting on their own fights much like uh floyd mayweather has done and things of that nature the problem is they're all locked into these long-term deals right Oh. get sued if they try to do that you know the 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 business of the ufc is a very interesting one because the fighters are deemed independent contractors by the ufc but in reality they're not really treated like independent contractors number one they can't just go out and fight for anyone right now right like if i hire someone to come fix my garage tomorrow i can't tell that person what to wear i can't tell that person what to do wednesday thursday friday i can't tell that person hey this weekend you need to tell me what you're doing what your plans are because we made a business arrangement for you to come fix my garage on tuesday but that's essentially where the ufc fighters are at number one oh. they can't have their own sponsors they have to wear a uniform they can't go fight anywhere they're locked into these exclusive long-term deals they have to literally update an app every day for the United States Anti-Doping Agency to know where they are so that they could go, whether on vacation, whether they're having a child at the oh. hospital, they have to go drug test them. There's no collective bargaining. There's no revenue sharing. They don't have a seat at the table. So there's a lot here that's going on. And at the end of the day, obviously, the fighters want more money. Obviously, they want to get paid more. Obviously, they understand that the window of opportunity in the sport is very small, much like the NFL. But I think they're finally starting to open their eyes and be like, wait a second, in the NBA, they make 50% of the revenue and we make 12 to 18%. Wait a second, they can have their own sponsors. We can't. There's a lot going on here that I think a lot of us in the sport have been wondering, when are the fighters finally going to realize that they don't really have the best deal? And perhaps now they're starting to realize that. It would take everybody, though. That's the problem with any of this yeah. thing. You, you think about WWE, they have the same thought as well. And now with uh, UFC, a lot of the conversations are happening. If it's Jorge, if it's Connor, if it's those at the top of the sport that are leading this charge and they're offering up to take pay cuts, it's going to be hard, though, I think, to get fighters who, and it's been very uh widely known that a lot of these fighters do not live a good life i mean they're training at 6 a.m they're living in like tiny little houses just trying to make it for their first 10 fights or whatever to make it through there will always be those fighters that will take any opportunity that the ufc has so i don't know how you ever get all i don't know how that would work has there ever been a, i know you do a podcast with cormier great podcast have those conversations ever happened in the locker room amongst fighters like is there ever yes yeah Ha happens all the time, but here's the problem, twofold. Number one, you just talked about the fighters. There's basically like four levels of fighters in the UFC. There's the top 1%, right? There's the Connors, the Habib, who for the most part over the years have said, all right, I freaking, you know, bled and sweat my way to this point. I'm living, you know, a good life now. I'm making my millions. And millions! Come on, guys. A little slow there. Geez. Well, your delivery uh, was terrible. <laughs> you could have gave a little, you know what sorry, I mean? Sorry, sorry. That's all right. Great work there. That uh, was incredible. Thank you. So, so 
they they are in that spot and they don't want to you know they don't want to lose that spot then you have the guys who are you know the next tier champions but aren't making what the top one percent are making they also feel like okay finally i just made it here i'm not going to ruffle feathers then you have the contenders who are working their way up right and they feel like okay i'm going to make it big i'm not making anything right now of note but i'm going to make it big so i don't want to mess this up and then you have the guys who just walk into the ufc who are making 10 and 10 10 to show 10 to win and then all of a sudden they're like oh i'm just happy to be here so you have this almost like these categories here where no one wants to help each other out. And in the past, we have had situations where fighters have spoken out. I mean, back in 2007, Randy Couture teamed up with Mark Cuban to try to change the whole game. It didn't work. What happened? Oh. They paid him and he fought Brock Lesnar. So historically, they'll pay the guy, then he stays quiet and nothing happens. Could it be this time that these guys are sitting back and saying, wait a second, it's not just about helping me. It's not just about today. I want to help the guys behind me. Who's going to be that guy? Who's going to be the Kurt Flood to help everyone behind me? Because historically, the fighters have been very selfish and they haven't looked behind them. Maybe it changes now. Oh, man. And so you're looking at the people who are at the top of the mountain to do so, and they have their hands it's in tough. the they have their hands in the cookie jar at the time. And it's like you would it would almost have to be retired fighters linking up with prime fighters and trying to talk about how the road at the beginning should have been easier for all of us. I, I feel like if any time would be, it would be right now, but boy, it feels like that's a long shot. What do they mean they can't find Connor a fight? A fight that Connor would want to agree to? Because I assume there's a lot of people, just like Connor said, like, hey, when you get to fight Connor, it's the red panty night and all that <laughs> stuff. You get your biggest payday. I would assume there's a lot of people that want to fight Connor, but there's not a lot of people that Connor's like, yeah, I'll fight that guy. Like, what is the, how does that whole negotiation thing go? And then Jorge Masvidal, same thing. Like, does he want to fight and they can't find a fight for him? Like, how does it, how does that whole process work? Okay, so there are two completely different um, situations right now. With Perfect. Connor, he just doesn't have a clear-cut opponent. He wants to fight Justin Gaethje, who just beat Tony Ferguson, but they want to do just off in September, and they're telling Connor, "Hey, just wait for the winner." Connor doesn't want to wait for the winner. Connor wants to fight. He says, "Give me Gaethje in July, and then the winner of that fight will fight Khabib." And they're saying no to that. Then he said, "All right." Give me Anderson Silva at a catchweight. And they're like, nah, we're not really interested in that fight all that much. And he said, all right, give me Masvidal. And they're like, well, no, we're going to do Masvidal at 170. So there isn't a guy, and I think it's somewhat of an indictment on the matchmaking. Here you have the biggest star in the history of the sport, the guy you emulated on a national broadcast <laughs> after hitting a punt like that was 30 yards. It wasn't even all that impressive, but you still did it, Vince which McMahon. I think was really great. Vince McMahon. I, I impersonated Vince McMahon, and it was, no, a, no, no. It was a completion no, Connor, of a pad. It wasn't even a punt, Ariel. Like, <laughs> stick to your little human cockfighting word, okay? We want to talk Listen. football. I'll start talking, okay? You just Connor, talk about your little fight game, okay, Ariel? <laughs> Connor made that popular. Vince, it was very niche. <laughs> yeah. Connor broke it out into the mainstream. So for me, you were doing the Billy strut, not the McMahon strut, all right? Okay, I In any event, it. they can't find him an opponent, and I think it's an indictment on the matchmaking. How do you not have, you know, contender one, two, three, four, five in a queue just waiting to fight this guy? Like, how are you having trouble finding this guy an opponent? Then Masvidal is saying, I fought for the BMF title at Madison Square Garden, this fictitious belt against Nathan Diaz, and you are offering me more to fight Nathan Diaz back in November then you're offering me to fight for the real, actual, undisputed welterweight title against Kamar Usman. How does that make sense? You're offering me what he says is almost double back then. You offered me double back then, and now you're offering me a 50% discount to fight for the BO belt. This doesn't make sense. You need to offer me as much, if not more, than what I fought for in my last fight, and now I'm an even bigger star. That's his issue here. So they're saying, to your point, all right, we're going to the next guy, and the next guy is a guy named Gilbert Burns, who is good, but he's just basically new to the game, and he's like, Tag me in. I'm ready to go. Like, I'll just fight for anything at this point. And again, to your point, that's why the union is always going to be a tough thing to do because there's always going to be some guy who's going to say, yeah, I'll just jump in there and do it for cheaper. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. How about Conor McGregor, though, saying I'll fight this guy now? And then because that's not the narrative that I think a lot of people would think. A lot of people would think like Conor doesn't want to fight or something of that no. nature. But instead, it's a complete opposite because he, he posts that video of him beating up the boss, banging it, banging it, banging <laughs> a thing that I got in my garage, by the way. Me and Conor doing the same workouts, no big deal. The fact that he retired after releasing that video didn't make any sense to me. And now you have Floyd Mayweather tweeting at him. Is there a chance that that's the next fight we see Conor McGregor in is a boxing match against Floyd Mayweather again? No, because um, he is contractually tied to the UFC. The UFC has to be on board with that. Now, can they, you know, get back into business with Floyd and make this happen? Sure. 
I don't know if there's a great demand for this. I think people want to see Conor at his best, and I think Conor at his best is fighting in mixed martial arts. Like, it was fun. Don't get me wrong. It was fun for what it was. It was fun to see Michael Jordan try out for the White Sox, but then, in the end, we all wanted to see him come back to the Bulls. And so I think that that was a fun little thing. But now we want to see him fight, and here you have, again, the last two years were disastrous for Conor McGregor, right? It was a nightmare for him, like just one bad thing after the next that he was doing to himself. Let me make that very clear. He was making mistakes, and now he's on the straight and narrow. Now he's actually doing good things. He's helping out his community, and he's like, put me in there. I want to fight. I want to just get back in there. He promised us three fights in 2020. That was a big deal, and a lot of people are like, nah, he'll get in trouble at some point. He won't come back in the summer, all that. and he's ready to go. He's in great shape, as you've seen on his social media, and they just can't figure it out, and they're telling him, wait. Okay, so what does it mean if you wait? If they do Gaethje versus Khabib in September, the winner of that fight's going to need some time off, right? So now we're talking about, what, Conor returning in December, January, and then he only fights once in 2020? That doesn't make any sense.